Combine cute pixel art graphics, relaxing music, incremental and idle game mechanics, gardening, and not one but two styles of fishing minigame. Welcome to Luna's Fishing Garden. We got axolotls. Or fish. A parrot blathers. A big fish. Wait, isn't that the fish from Merchants of the Skies? Oh my gosh. Yes, it, it literally is. <laughs> Silly Sam. Everyone knows apples aren't real. I loaded up this game intending to take a quick first look, and the next thing I knew, it was three hours later and I had finished the game. It is fairly short, although the length may vary depending on your gameplay style, but it's also simultaneously highly addictive and very relaxing. It's a truly wholesome experience. You ride your floating leaf around between islands, tidy them up, plant trees and water plants, and go fishing. The fishing is especially interesting because there are two ways to play it and you can switch back and forth between these two modes at any time. In the more difficult mode, the game resembles the Stardew Valley fishing minigame, but without the waiting for a bite and the bouncing off the bottom of the window. In the simple mode, the game is much easier and, in fact, impossible to fail in many cases. It's just interactive enough to keep you engaged without being an actual challenge you have to worry about failing. In both fishing modes, each fish has its own pattern of behavior. It makes the minigame feel more tactile and engaging, and you quickly learn to recognize which fish is on the line by its behavior. You can also adjust the speed at which the fishing minigame moves, so if you have slower reaction time, or if you want a more difficult challenge, you have control over your experience. You'll do quests for the different spirits in this world, each a unique character that really feels alive. My favorite is Gustav, the gecko artiste. How does he manage to be so arrogant while still being charming? I feel like he should be insufferable, but I just love him so much. In the early game, you need to run around picking plants and catching fish to earn magic leaves, the currency of the game. But after a while, you can summon Kias to harvest the fruit trees for you and Capybaras to handle the water plants. The Capybaras ride around in a little boat. They are wearing hats. They are delightful. And I love them. These helpers turn part of the game into an idle game, and you can leave it running for a bit and come back to riches. All in all, although it is a bit short, I have very little to critique in Luna's Fishing Garden. For the most part, the game is very accessible. There are two control schemes, one with a gamepad, which is very intuitive, and one with the mouse only, but you can't manually rebind the controls, so that is a limitation for some disabled players. When you sell your items, you automatically sell everything in your inventory that isn't part of an active quest, so there's no way to save items aside, such as those you want to submit to Nigel to catalog. This is only a minor inconvenience, though. You just need to visit Nigel first before you sell stuff. And as much as I love the Kias and the Capybaras and their adorable little hats, they do harvest everything indiscriminately. So if you need a specific item for a quest, you have to camp the plants for it in order to harvest them before your helpers get to them. And that's kind of it. I don't have any major complaints. I wish it was longer, but that's only because it's delightful and I want more. The devs at Cold Wild Games did a really great job on this one. Don't forget to subscribe for more indie game reviews. Making videos like this is a full-time job I don't get paid for. So if you can spare as little as a dollar per month, your support will mean the world to me, and I have lots of rewards to offer you and thanks. Check out patreon.com slash secretfoxfire for more info. Thank you to my wonderful patrons for their support, to the devs for inviting me to try their game, and of course, thank you for watching.